What's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. So first of all you guys killed it at Red CTF. We're going to do the box today and we're going to tell you guys how to solve it. If you guys want to follow along, link will be in the description below. So let's get started, shall we? Now, first of all, uh, we had a few write-ups and we also had a fr prize for the best write-up available. Um, we had a discussion among the people who were supposed to review those uh, and we couldn't come to a conclusion to which should be the winner. So what we've done is we've picked the three best ones, which were Cymax, Matt P and Bad Boy in this case. And we're going to pick a random one. So let's do that right away, shall we? Now, of course, Thank you guys all so much for joining and it looks like Cymax is the winner. Damn Cymax, you are killing it. That guy won two prizes and also this one, so that's going to be your third prize. <laughs> awesome, three months of Try Hack Me. Good job, man. Now let's get on to the box, shall we? But before we do that, I want to take just one moment to dedicate this video to my boy, my king. He's my ferret I'm talking about. Um, his name is Bera. Bera died recently, that's why the videos have been a little bit lacking. But I want to eternalize his spirit in this video because he was a fighter. He was amazing and he was so strong and he was all that this room encompasses like a fighter, you know. You're going to have to be a fighter to solve this room. So let's get started, shall we? Now, of course, again, link is going to be in the description below. If you go to this link directly, it probably won't work because the room will probably be private again. You're going to start up this room. It's going to take a while before the machine is fully started. So give it about 10 minutes, I would say, at least 10 minutes. And then you can do start doing your first things. Now, of course, first things first, what I would do is an Nmap scan. And Nmap showed me here that there are a couple of ports open. Now let's put this text a little bit bigger. I've been asked to do that. There are a few ports open, port 22 and port 80. That's really important. Also Nmap, I use uh, the dash S, C and dash S, V uh, parameters there. That's uh, S, C will, uh, use, will execute the default scripts and S, V will do banner enumeration. And that banner enumeration has got me that on port 80, we have an HTTP open with Node.js running. That's going to be important later. Now, if you guys go back, I would highly recommend you read the description of the room as well. There are going to be some tips in here, some hints for you guys. Um, now, first things first, of course, I would surf there. Now, while I surf there, I would start up my few other scans like Nikto. I would also do a Durbuster to see what's running in the background. Um, but all of the files here are easily found. So um, these are just the menu items. When you navigate to the IP directly, you can see the menu items here. A couple of interesting things we can see, an upload functionality. Now, when you first click this, you're going to have to log in, but you don't have an email address yet or an account. So you're going to have to register, which I already did. And then of course you can log in. Now, when we're logged in, the first thing I'd like to do is check out what's happening. What's being set? Is there like a session cookie being set? Is there something being set somewhere? So we're going to go back to login. We're going to clear this here and we're going to retry this. And we can see in the request and the response here, nothing really interesting. So this is the request. Um, the cookies here, we can see something interesting. We see an HTTP only cookie. So that means we cannot steal it using cross-site scripting. And it has a value and this looks suspicious suspiciously like a JWT token. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to JWT.io. I'm going to check out what's happening in the background, you know, just um, see what this JWT is all about. And we can see here that we have in this JWT a payload with an identifier is admin set to false and is uh, I IAT set to some value. No idea uh, issued at this apparently means. So um, now we also have an HMAC signature, but we do not have the secret yet. So any change we make in here is going to be invalid because our signature isn't going to be correct. Um, so this JWT of course isn't going to be accepted. Now we're going to need to find this key somehow. So we'll remember this for later if we want to manipulate the JWT. A couple of other things we can see here, we can do file uploads. So we can try to file uh, to upload like a shell and see if we can get anything that way. Now, 
Of course, that's not going to work here. Uh, what we were aiming for here and what the builders of the box did was they put an XXC in here and that's really awesome. I'm going to show you guys how it works because if you try to upload like, uh, let me get the correct document. If you try to upload like anything that's not a docx or a txt file, you're going to get an error saying you can only upload these files. Now um, that's, you, you guys all know that XXCs occur through XMLs. So if you look at the structure of a docx, I'm going to link this article in the description as well. If you look at the structure, you can see that it's basically a ton of XML files just being propped up. And you can see here, if you unzip your docx file, that you have a document.xml. And this document.xml, we can also insert our external entities in. Now in here, they give the example of getting the uh, file etc password. You guys can do that, but it's not going to be very useful in this case. What's going to need to happen is since we're working on, let's go back here, since we are working on our node.js, we need the environment file for this. Uh, so the .env file. Now, where is this .env file stored, you might ask. Let me upload this file real quick. When we go to the files, you can see the upload path in here. So this is going to be the full upload path that you need. And you need to know where the env file is. So when we open this resume.docx, you can see that we finally find our token secret. And this token secret is what we need to Again, let's copy this real quick. We need this to encrypt our JWT token. Also, we can find the first flag in here. This flag was not worth any points. This was worth just a little bit of, um, you know, good, good on you, you're going the right way. Uh, and if we paste our signature in here, we can see that the signature is verified. Now let's copy this JWT token. In fact, I'm going to quickly do this again just to make sure that I have the correct JWT token. So I'm going to copy and paste my JWT token in here. I'm going to change is admin to true. I'm going to copy this. There we go. And I'm going to paste it over my existing cookies value. Of course, there we go. Save this. And now I should be administrator. You might be asking yourself, okay, you're an administrator. So now what? Can I still upload files? Yeah, so I'm still logged in. Can I look at the files? Yeah, I can still look at the files, but I don't see any new functionality. So, but wait a second, when I open a file, there is a big orange delete button, delete file. Now that might be interesting. That's some new functionality we've gained as an administrator. So those were the first couple of steps. The next steps are going to be in a separate video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please leave me a like. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.